Whenever I've assessed the practicality of wearing a weapon on your back, it's never been a matter if you could actually wear the weapon on your back, but more so, how practical and convenient is it? And, as you can see, I am wearing a spear, so the more important question is, can I draw it fast? I'd say you can. Shadow Versity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and as you've probably been able to tell from the title and this cold open, I'm going to be discussing the practicality and plausibility of wearing a spear on your back, and then I'm also going to be uh, exploring the historical validity for it, because surprisingly, there might be some precedent for this, but that comes with a big caveat that if there is, it, I'll say even right now, wasn't very common from what I've been able to find, but... You know, as we find how plausible and practical it is, maybe I'll convince you that perhaps more people in the past might have actually done it. And so right off the bat, this question about wearing a spear on your back, first I want to discuss why. What's the point? But also where it comes from. Yet before I do that, I need to give credit where credit is due, because as you can see, I have a bit of an attachment to my spear here, specifically a sling. Now, this idea, you know, is fairly self-evident. I had it for a bit, even from back when I was, uh, had the video of how many uh, weapons can an adventurer can carry. And in that video, this is a little too much. I discuss the fact that wearing your spear on your back, how plausible it is, it doesn't seem too realistic, but is there a way you can do it? I say, I'd like to explore it. And even then I, was, I had this idea, but of course, many of you had this idea as well, that one of the most, e self-evident ways to wear a spear on your back is to add a sling to it. And then one of you wonderful people actually went a step further. Specifically, someone who I have mentioned on this channel before, Dawson Elk. Is it Elk or Elky? I'm sorry about it. I haven't heard you how to pronounce your last name. But Dawson is actually uh, being cast in the role of playing Dalis the Conqueror, or Dalen, in the short film adaptation of my book. It's that Dawson, and is also a fan of this channel, and he saw that video and felt a bit inspired to give it a go. And in that video, he showed what basically I have here, a rope-like sling, which was a really intuitive and clever way of uh, attaching a sling to a staff because it adds further utility, specifically the ability to uh, switch you know, the actual anchor point. Friction holds it in place really well. And so Dawson shows this in his video. So mad props to Dawson. I'll link his video in the description. You should check him out, giving this a go. And then while I was looking at it, okay, okay. So we can attach a sling fairly easily. If you have rope or even just a leather strap, you'd be able to figure out some way to attach it. And what's yeah, a good thing about this, I'm actually not needing to alter the spear itself. I'm not needing to drill a hole which could weaken it or make a different weird attachment attached to it. This is still just a plain spear. You can pick up any spear and if you have a bit of rope, you can actually attach to it. I had a bit too much rope, so I looped it around a lot to take up the slack, but it turned out this was actually a good uh, point because that means this point doesn't move. And this is important because out of any point, I'd only want this one to move, not this, for the reasons I'll go into. Because the next part that I'm going to elaborate further on, on top of Dawson's video, is a different application, specifically how you would wear it, which is the best way to orient the spear, and how practical and functional it would be for multiple situations if you're using it two-handed, but what about one-handed? Could I actually wear a spear on my back while holding a shield? Because this changes the game completely. It means I actually need to be able to put it on my back and take it off one-handed which is a bit more of a task than uh, doing it two-handed, as you could imagine. All right, so where does this idea or the question of could you actually wear a spear on your back come from? And it actually kind of comes from video games and pop culture, very much in the same vein as wearing a sword on your back. Because uh, when you look at medieval art, you don't see really any depictions of it being done this way. And so when we see video games, classic example is Mountain Blade, and Matt Easton has a great video where he actually discusses about that, saying it wasn't done historically. And from looking at the artwork, that very much seems to be the case. Yet, what is the difference between, say, a 
pure historical setting and a video game and even adventuring? Well, it's the fact that oftentimes you actually want to switch between weapons. In a more strict historical setting, when you go on a battlefield, you would pick a primary weapon. And honestly, that's the weapon you're going to be trying to use through most of the battlefield and you'll rarely switch it up unless very specific circumstances dictate it. The main reason why you're going to switch up a weapon outside of those very specific circumstances is when you actually get disarmed and you drop it, okay? This is when you have a backup weapon ready to go and why you might be actually wearing more than one weapon. And look, there might be other situations where uh, a dagger would be more advantageous if you're fighting someone against armor or something like that. But having said that, a spear is still a really good weapon against armor. And so more often than not, you're not going to need to switch your weapon in a battlefield situation. And so that means if you're going in, you just all you need to do is hold it, okay? It'll be very rare where you're actually in a position where you'll need to sling the spear away, put it there, change weapons, use what you want to do, and then put the weapon away, and then switch back. Because more often than not, the, uh, the main weapon, the primary weapon, is going to serve your purposes through most of the battle engagement. But in video games, and especially adventure-like scenarios where you might be fighting a monster that's suddenly really resistant to thrusts, and you need to use something else, or you need to throw out a tool, or something like that, and there's a much higher need to switch weapons, but also, with uh, adventuring specifically, you're traveling a lot more, but you need your weapons on hand very quickly. In a warfare battlefield scenario, when you're traveling, unless there's an actual ambush, which is more exceptional than normal, you kind of know when you need to fight, which means you just carry the spear and, uh, you know, they would generally just carry it like this, walk around, and they're fine. And uh, having said that, of course, it'll be on hand ready to use when they need it, but they might not be wearing their armor in any number of things, but they don't necessarily need their two hands. You see, the main reason people hang weapons on their body is to free up both hands to actually have a bit more freedom of movement and utility. But right, that right there is where we actually hit something interesting. It's that historically, people have often, very often, opted, if it was not too inconvenient, to hang weapons on their person to free up their arms, okay? That's the big inconvenient thing about something like a spear, is that to carry it, to use it, you always have at least one arm taken while you're actually carrying it. And so there is actual legitimate utility in being able to hang something on your body. And this is where we come to the question of, okay, if you're in a situation where you legitimately need to do that and you want to do that, how? What's the easiest way? And this can kind of come into some of the discussion as to why perhaps we don't see it very often in the past, with some exceptions. I'll show you, we'll get there, okay. But it might very well be because to do this, you actually need an additional attachment. And not everyone might have spare rope to do it. They might not have a spare leather strap to hook it up like that. And if it's just a raw spear, now this spear is uh, a little bit longer for uh, hopefully some demonstrations a bit later on. But if I was just given this and I have no additional attachment, where, how on earth can I hang it on my body anywhere? I, uh, like, <laughs> as we saw in my video, uh, you know, the weapons of entry can carry. Yeah, you could try and, uh, you know, loop it through your belt. Uh, but it's, it's not very practical. In nearly every circumstance, when you just have a spear by itself without any custom attachment, you're just going to carry it like this. It's, a, it's the most convenient way. I mean, contrast that with a sword, okay? If you have a sword, most swords will have a scabbard there is already a very convenient way to attach it to your body. And it's literally, you don't need even, you know, a sword carriage like this, just loop it through your belt. If, and most people would have a belt, holding up pants or whatever, and if you have a belt, you have a very convenient place to put your sword like that. You can't do that with a spear, they're too big. Although having said that, you might actually be able to slip a shorter spear through the back of your belt. And the friction really should be able to hold it in place and it shouldn't be too uncomfortable. Unfortunately, I didn't think of testing this on the day of filming, but in retrospect, that should be possible, and who knows, this might be what is being done in the images that we're looking at right now. We can't know for certain, but it's possible. But this is the same with an axe. I could loop an axe through, be careful of the axe head. In those situations, you might want an actual, you know, sheath for the axe head. But still, especially knives and things, straight through the belt, so convenient, that's kind of the first option. And I think that also is one of the reasons why it created a tradition of wearing swords at the side than on your back, because swords were, of course, made, especially the scabbards, made 
with attachments to them to more conveniently attach to your belt. And so the idea that no one ever added an attachment to a weapon to help attach it or hang them on their body is incorrect. We did it often. This is why shields have shield straps as well. In many instances in the medieval period, they went out of their way to attach a strap to it, okay? You can use a shield without a strap. It's not an essential thing. And they did it to wear it. Hang it on their back just like this. And this is the other interesting thing. This also shows that people in the medieval period weren't opposed to wearing things on their back because shields this is the primary way in which they wore it with a back strap. And having a back strap like this is actually a very convenient way because you just swing it out, grab it, good to go, and you don't even need to release the strap. You can use it right there like that. And so with them not being opposed to wearing shields on their back, why didn't they wear anything else? And the question could be, because the shield is already there. It's in the way. And so if you already have something on your back, kind of more difficult to put something in addition on your back as well. But it can be done. I've done it with my back scabbard. But it depends on how much trouble you want to go to. So with the fact that people did attach straps to things to hang them over their back specifically, again, that kind of means this idea of attaching a strap to a spear isn't nearly as implausible or impractical as we might assume because right here. Which brings us back to attaching a rope strap to a spear, which is a very intuitive and logical conclusion to solve the problem of being able to put a spear on your back and it becomes really easy. So if you really want to do that, and like, have a look at this, okay? Having the spear on my back like this is actually surprisingly convenient. I was kind of worried that the, uh, well, actually, before I get there, because the question is, what is the best way to wear it on your back now? And I'll, I'll finish off that point that it is so convenient. Look, at my, my, my arms are completely free, and it's actually, you know, surprisingly stable. It's like this, my sword waves around just as much as the spear. You might notice that I'm wearing the spear facing down. I'm gonna get there as to which is the uh, best way to actually wear a spear on your back. But finishing off the point, like I said, it's actually surprisingly convenient. My feet aren't kicking it as I'm walking. And uh, it was actually worked far better than I was expecting when I tried this out. And you can absolutely, you know, let me, let me do a bit of a, let me do a bit of a run. Okay, you can absolutely run with this on much better than I expected. Then I wanted to explore what are the best ways to do it? Because in video games, and a lot of people just their default, when they're putting a spear on their back, even with a strap, they have it pointed upwards, okay? It's because when you're holding a spear, it's like this, and it's good to go, and so it seems like whenever you wear a spear on your back, well, you just have it pointed up like so as well. Just like that. But I think this is missing a very crucial important step. And that is, well one, it's more top heavy, okay? Which causes it to hang further down. So honestly though, if you adjusted where the anchor points are, this wouldn't be as much of a problem. But then comes the question of drawing the spear and what is the most convenient position for it to be in when you want to use it. And so when it's like this, you, you can try and grab it out like that, like that. That wasn't too bad, but the other ways, uh, could be much, much longer where instead of going over the shoulder, you're gonna go underneath and you draw it like this, but now it's literally facing the wrong, wrong direction. And when I was thinking about it, the b easiest way to grab the spear is with whatever main hand, you grab the underside and pull it forward like that, which means if the spear is facing down, it's right into position, ready to go. Now, if I'm using a two-handed, it's gonna be like this on this side. If it's one-handed, it's gonna be like this on this side. So if I'm doing it two-handed, I'd be wearing it, first of all, the thing is like wearing it like this, okay? And in this position, it's just a matter of, <laughs> if you didn't even have time to get the loop over your arm, you could just grab it like this. But doing that puts it in a pretty good position, just go, boink, and you're ready to go. But you might notice I did something different in the cold open, because you don't have to loop it over your whole body just loop it over one shoulder. So before I show you looping over one shoulder, because I feel that the most convenient way is to wear a spear on your back is pointed downwards, that is why I have this in a fixed position. Because I don't want the point to hit the ground, but I want it at a good, convenient point of balance for it, for it to hang nicely, which is why I anchored it right there, and this one doesn't move. And so wherever, I, wherever it's hanging, okay, this is the part it's hanging from, that means it's not gonna hit the ground from that position. But then I can change the position to this, to tighten it, to loosen it, which actually gives you a lot of versatility in the convenience of wearing this thing. And so you just find the right point where you got enough, and then you just chuck it over your shoulder 
like so. So depending on how much slack you need, you just have it like there, and then you just put it over your shoulder, just like that, and it is remarkably secure with my armor. I tried this out without my armor, it actually slid off a bit, but there is a solution for that as well. But with the armor, it actually gets caught on the actual side part and holds it in place remarkably well. And so when I need to use it now, I can just pull it off really, really quickly, do what I need to do. And when I'm putting it away, that's incredibly easy. And it's still really secure. Like, ah, see there, there's a good example of it sliding down sometimes, but most of the time, really secure, and then when I need it, it's right there, good to go. All right, but how do you solve the problem of it potentially sliding off? And this is where the versatility of the rope strap works out really, really well. Give yourself some slack, put it down, make a loop. And if the loop isn't big enough, and look, the loop wasn't big enough then, so I'll need more slack right there, and then put it up just like that. But interesting thing about this, the armor makes it more difficult because without the armor, this is actually a really good solution to be able to do it. And you do it in such a way where it hikes up, but the armor is actually making it more difficult for the loop solution, right? Interestingly enough, the armor makes it easier without the loop and just sliding it right there and you're good to go. It works really, really well, really secure. You're not gonna be like, oh, what, 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 what? You want to fight the goblins? Well, <laughs> but what about doing it one-handed? And doing it one-handed with, you know, just an over-the-shoulder thing can be done. I think it's a little bit more tricky because now I need to put it in this hand. So if I'm using a shield, sometimes you want to swing the shield, sometimes you can just grab it. But swinging the but look, it's right here, okay? So this is remarkably fast. I already have my hand on my spear to go right there. So that's not an issue. So if I'm, you know, just casually walking and then I'm suddenly waylaid, suddenly... <laughs> That was fast. <laughs> that worked really well. So, what's interesting about this, the most convenient way of wearing a spear on your back is actually over a shoulder, okay? And there are different ways to attach it more securely, but that is still pretty secure. But if you really just want to make sure it's not gonna fall off, give yourself a bit of slack, and you can always loop it over your back like that. Now, can you actually take it off one-handed with it over your head? And the answer is, yes, you can. And then if I want to put it back one-handed, well, one-handed back, one-handed draw, shield out, just like that, back. Then some, <laughs> sometimes you might want to do two-handed because like I'm getting caught on the armor there. But I actually want to try that a couple of times to really test that. And so it's a matter of pulling it out like so, and then putting it back in. And then out, like so, and then back on. So technically, doing this with one-handed, right, this should mean you'd be able to do this uh, on horseback. Sometimes you can lose grip, but that's interesting. I can't test it to see if you can get away with doing this from on horseback. But if Jason Kingsley is interested in trying it out, check out his YouTube channel, Modern History TV. Phenomenal YouTube content, like really, really good. So if Jason's game, try and see if, uh, cause spears are rather useful on horseback, particularly lances, this is a way that could work. Cause that means you could free up both your arms, okay, when you're on the horse, and then when you need it, you just grab it there, do what you need to do, and then if you're still fighting or whatever, you just chuck it back on. That's getting easier. That's like one-handed, taking spear off, using it, and that's with a shield as well, all right? So if I wanted to be more comfortable, just like that. So that is really interesting. It can actually be done. I'd be really interested in seeing if it can be done on horseback, Jason, but only if you have the time, of course, mate. And uh, Having said that though, when uh, you know you don't need a shield, or even if you do need a shield, it really does seem like the most convenient way is uh, over one shoulder, just like so, because then it's really easy to bring out and put back. But if you want the added security, because look, it might slip off now and then occasionally, especially if you don't have something for it to catch onto, like my armor is doing, well then, like I said, you can just put it over like that. And as we saw time and time again, you absolutely can take it off one-handed. That's very, very cool. The question is though, 
I have been doing this all with this spear. I highly doubt I'd be able to do it with a longer one, okay? Point of balance is completely different. It'd be much more awkward, much more chance of actually hitting something. And so uh, it really depends on how big your spear is. And this is essentially verging on a pike right here. But having said that, it also could be the type of spear or lance that you'd want to use on horseback. Because look at the reach on this thing. This is, this is gorgeous, right? And you can really hammer it in and get it up and you actually get, have a still decent amount of control, you know, uh, with this one here. And yeah, I think you're going to be running into way more troubles trying to wear this on your back in comparison to this. Because seriously, we can just test it out just by me putting it like so. I need to be about there, so the spearhead isn't touching the ground. And look at how much this head is still protruding. But depending on the length of spear, I have been surprised to find it is far more uh, functional than what I was initially expecting. I didn't expect to actually be that easy to put on your back and take it off, especially one-handed, or for it to be that secure, uh, for the solution to be that easy. So then, is there historical precedent for it? And I've alluded that, you know, I might have found something because uh, when doing some research online to see, you know, going through historical artwork, is there anything that indicates it? First thing I found is that does, really does not seem to be anything from the medieval period, but that was only one research session. That is not to say that there is no depiction anywhere of a spear that's either on your back or slung. Because having said that, I did find this one. This seems to be a depiction of uh, David and Goliath, and there's a spear just kind of floating on his back. There's no attachment. Is it tucked into his belt? Don't know. But there's no one else behind him, because usually when you see spears behind people that might be on the back, there are other people in the background which are more likely just holding the spear. So there's that. Going further abroad, I found some images, and these ones date to around um, uh, the 1800s. So look, they're not too far behind, but they do indicate something interesting. And these look to be some Asiatic type of uh, mounted warriors. And look at how their spears are on their shoulders. They're, they're on their back, but what's interesting, remember I said the most practical way seems to be over one shoulder? Look at how they're doing it. Literally over the one shoulder, not over the head. And right there, ready to just grab like that. It's not medieval, but it goes to show you that there actually seems to be enough practical utility in this concept that there are evidences. Or oh, remember that was over, over one shoulder, not even two. There are certain points of evidence to indicate that some people might have done it in the past at times, and I think that makes sense because when experimenting with myself, it actually it works. There's another type of way that a spear was assisted in being held or put on the body, and that was usually just resting it on the, on the stirrup of a horse. So if you're a knight, you just rest it on the stirrup. That means you're not holding the full weight. And what we also see in some artworks is an actual attachment of rope, but on the bottom to loop it around your foot or something like that to hold it on the saddle. And then you could just kind of rest it. So if I just rest it on your shoulder or something like that while you're riding, which also frees up your arm. So there's another way of doing it on horseback specifically. And that one seems to be more plausible for a medieval setting for people on horseback because everyone has a stirrup and you can just rest it. You're good. If I was walking over a long distance and I wanted my hands free, this is such a intuitive solution that solves the problem. Look. Just free hands, spear. Do I need to draw it quickly? Whoa, right there. That's if I, I mean, if I, uh, if I was on horseback, I would need it on this side. But if I didn't have a shield and I was dual wielding, as I was showing before, on this side, and then right off, got caught on the armor then, right off just like that. So that's pretty good. I wanna see if I can actually get that loop thing to make sure it doesn't fall off. Cause it was working really well when I didn't have my armor on, but, like that. Okay, see this. This is actually, it self tightens because when it's hanging down, tightens it, right? And this is actually really, like, look at this. I mean, I reckon I could get off if I really, really yanked it, but uh, there we go, see, like that. But that was actually particularly secure. <laughs> I'm not even sure that's necessary because the armor, man, there we go. Just like so. I think that's it. 
I think those are all the points I wanted to discuss. You could even get away with doing it with a shield on your back. Um, surprisingly secure, surprisingly convenient, and easy to do. Now, uh, if you guys are wanting to try this out, if you're doing LARP and everything, reenactment, they might have a few more objections because, as I mentioned, I looked through a decent amount, like a couple of hundred of uh, images of spe medieval spears at work and stuff. Nothing to indicate that there was a, a strap attached or it being on your back, apart from that weird one that I showed you before. So reenactment might have a few more problems with it, but having said that, a lot of the artwork depicting spears is when people have them out and using them. And, I mean, if this was done, that there would be like an attachment. And none of these spears, even when they're holding them, had the attachment on, so like, you know, a strap. So take from that what you will, but uh, it doesn't seem like, at least from the artwork, it wasn't done prominently. Because it's not to say no one ever did it somewhere. So I think it's actually, I think someone must have done it in the past sometime because it's so convenient and it's self-evident. And I don't think people are idiots. And if they wanted their arms freed up, I really think someone must have done it sometime in the past. But the artwork clearly indicates that if they did, it was not prevalent at all. Okay. Artwork can give us a very strong indication of what was more likely done and what was more commonly done by how it's represented. But even with having said that, as I mentioned, turns out there is far more functionality in wearing a spear on your back than I expected, and particularly one shoulder over than the two, and it works really, really well. So thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and of course, I hope to see you in the next video on Shadowversity. So till then, farewell, and now I'm just gonna be walking away with my spear on my back so you can see it. Are you, are you seeing us? Are you watching? I know you can see me. I know you can still see me. I'm still walking. I'm still walking with it on my back. Are you watching? I know you can see me. I'm still walking. I'm still walking.